On today's special edition of PMEA's Take Note podcast, we are talking with the candidates for PMEA president-elect. Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Despedakis, and on today's PMEA's Take Note podcast, we are speaking with the two candidates for PMEA's president-elect. And we are releasing this podcast on the day that voting has opened for you as PMEA members for not only the presidential-elect candidate, but also for content area reps. And you can find all of that information in the email you received from PMEA about that. Now, just to set up these two interviews, uh, we are asking both candidates the exact same questions, uh, and they will have the chance to respond that will help you inform your decision. So joining us now is Brett Keith, uh, a a, a candidate for president-elect. Brett, thanks for joining us. You're very welcome, Mark. It's glad to be. I'm very happy to be here. So uh, let's let's get right into it here, and uh, so you folks can learn about you. So let's start with: Can you t- uh, give us your quick bio? Sure. Well, the real quick version: um, I am a high school graduate of Tyrone Area High School here in Blair County. Um, attended Penn State um, in uh, vocal uh, music education, and uh, graduated there in two thousand six. Um, after taking some time off from education, um, went right back to it and um, ended up teaching at Bishop Guilfoyle Catholic High School, which is in Altoona, Pennsylvania. I spent about six years there. Uh, in the meantime, I was teaching band, choir, general music, leading uh, musical theater productions and uh, musical theater classes, as well as tech classes there. And uh, during my time there, I increased participation musically in ensembles and the different groups and classes and awareness for music education by about oh, about 200% while I was there. So it was a big undertaking, but something I'm very proud of um, to leave that legacy at uh, Bishop Guilfoyle. Um, and I'm currently at uh, Northern Bedford County School District where I teach grades six through 12. And my emphasis in general music and uh, the director of choirs. I have uh, two major ensembles, um, as well as audition select ensembles here. And again, I also lead the uh, musical theater program. And we teach uh, anything from theory, AP music theory, uh, to individualized lessons in our elective classes. So we kind of run the gamut here, but my main focus is uh, choral education and general music here at Northern Bedford County. So that's the basic rundown where I'm at, uh, just finished up a run of the District 6 presidency um, over the past three years through a global pandemic. And here we are sitting talking about the next level. Right. Yeah, exactly. So so then let's take it to the next level. And then so what interests you in taking on the role as PMA president? Well, first and foremost, Mark, I think, you know, my biggest thing, um, and I'm going to lay it out in two ways. One, PMEA is a great organization with a very solid foundation um, and watching it evolve and grow and come into where it's at over the past couple of years. I think it's an organization I'm very proud to be a part of um, through its uh, inception, but also through its involvement too. And it's been real nice um, to add the second layer of the timing aspect. As I mentioned, I just finished up a run of the District 6 president here in Bedford, Blair, Cambria and Somerset counties. And just as I was really getting elbows deep into my presidency, the whole world (laughs) shut down and you know we were forced to lead in different ways and I I would like to say that I was successful in doing that but also empowering our district membership and our leadership to adapt on a dime's notice and to work our way through the global pandemic even up to recently and what we're working through currently um, the experience that I was able to have and lead through that difficult time really makes me feel like this is the time for it. You know, as many people may know that being a district president allows us to sit on the state board as well. So as we were all getting shut down, there were many meetings, many of us met in Pittsburgh to uh, get the WRO orchestra selections together on the day that, you know, that, that Friday the 13th that everything was happening. Um, 
to, to gain that experience, to work alongside our state leadership, um, the executive board, and also to continue that work through strategic planning, sitting on that committee, as well as um, sitting on the committee that's reviewing our bylaws currently. So a lot of that experience that's, you know, working there, I think that timing is a, you know, benefit to myself. You know, I, I think I mentioned to you before the, the interview started that, you know, had this been any other year or 15 years down the road, you know, the experience wouldn't be as fresh, but being heavily involved in the organization as I am currently, um, and it's something that I pride myself in because I think it's worthwhile, not just for myself and my district, but for our members, um, but even beyond that, for our students that we are serving as music educators, I think it's important. So I think that timing and the relevance of where we're at, being able to adapt and learn and create different programs throughout trying times has enabled us to, you know, kind of scatter our vision briefly, but in a moment of clarity, you know, to see this is where we need to head. This is how we have to plan. This is the decision that we are making. And here is how we're going to execute and communicate that information to our members and to the folks who PMEA supports. So you touched on it briefly, but a uh, little, little more here. So how does PMEA best serve music educators and music students now that we are kind of hopefully, fingers crossed, post-pandemic? <laughs> well, yeah, and I, and, and I know exactly where you're going with that. This, uh, the moment where I talked about the vision scattering, you know, if we continue to do things, and I'm not just talking as PMEA members or PMEA as an organization, though it is you know, important to look at it this way. If we continue to do things as we've done them in the past, we're never going to succeed. You know, our world, our communities, our lives are not as what they were two years ago. If we look historically throughout history, the reason there is change is that new things are happening, new visions are created, our environments are changing around us. And that's where we've been in the past year and a half to two years through a global pandemic. And when we look at what was happening during that time, we see that we have a lot of strong educators, not just in music education, but education all around. But we must harness the power of not just our memberships, our membership, but our educators who are doing great things already. It's not just getting the platform to have it. We have a lot of power in our people. And I think it's important for us to empower them to share, collaborate, and communicate. And I think that's something that PMEA can and should facilitate. You know, we have the membership and we can, one, gather new membership via that way, but also do what's best for our students, you know, they're the ones who had to look for us for guidance too, even though behind the scenes, we're doing the same thing. But if we are to fully serve, we have to adapt. We have to plan ahead. And again, it's not just doing the same things as before. Again, we have a great foundation and a great system in place, but we're not living in the same world. And if we, you know, continue to operate that way, you know, we're, we're going to hurt ourselves, but also really hurt our students. We need to all move forward together. Um, on a quick side note, Mark, and I know just in the interest of time, two weeks ago, I was sitting at a district band concert in Hollidaysburg and um, seeing the power of music bringing people together. And I looked across the room as the concert was happening, you know, as the music was playing and being swept up in that, but understanding that everybody in that room, whether it was a student, a conductor, a director, or a family member or community, uh, community member who was sitting in the audience had all been through something, whether it was loss, loss of connection, loss of family members, loss of time, loss of jobs, uh, financial, everything that we're all still struggling with and tr trying to, you know, adapt and come out of. But everyone in that room had experienced something. But what was really surreal to me was to see that 
that room was there for one purpose that evening and to experience music as a whole, as listeners, as makers, but to be connected. And we need more of that. And I think that's the power that PME has. We can facilitate those conversations. We can facilitate those programs. We can build upon them. We can expand them and we can build those relationships even further uh, to, to really benefit not just PMEA, but benefit really all human beings, not just in Pennsylvania too. We have a bigger reaching grasp than I think many of us even realize a lot of times. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with that uh, for sure. Just, uh, you know, I think that as humans, we don't realize, you know, how much power we really have around those around us um, yes. just, just by being present. Um, so you kind of touched on this uh, a little bit, but I look, again, looking for you to expand a little bit more. What are your goals for PMEA and how do you think you can accomplish them? Well, uh, Mark, I think our goals is that we have to find a, a way, you know, coming off of this pandemic, we have to find a way in which we're not just merely adapting anymore. You know, we are planning, you know, not just for survival, but planning for the future. What is our short-term goal? What is our long-term goal? Um, I also think that we have to take a look at PMEA, as I mentioned this in my vision statement um, that I supplied, was to look at PMEA as a multifaceted organization. Um, if you really look at the setup of PMEA, what it facilitates and who it supports, we don't just support one area. You know, if you look at the festival route, we are supporting multiple content areas, choir, uh, band, orchestra, jazz, um, different grade levels. We also support our educators in professional development, what we do with the conferences, what we do in webinars and beyond, and things that are attached to festivals, things that are not attached to festivals. We also look at what we do for student events. <laughs> and then we look at what we need to, as far as an organizational setup. There are a lot of moving parts to PMEA. And I think it is important and crucial for us to start looking at all of those different lenses at the same time and how they are working from this central hub of a mission statement and our focus. Um, partially, I think we need to, and, and this is something you know I've heard colleagues say, and this is something I've fully believe in is that we need to, again, harness the power of our membership because everybody brings a lot to the table. We need to empower them. That's who we represent because ultimately our membership is who is in the trenches with our students, you know, who ultimately benefit from our profession and our field. And part of that conversation, we're seeing that through that support system, we're building relationships. We're building relationships with students. We're building relationships with educators. We're building relationships with our colleagues. But I think we also need to continue to build our relationships with other organizations. Not that we do not, but I think we need to strengthen them. It's important for us to have those bonds of the music education associations, you know, whether it's Cone Summer or whether it's ACDA of Pennsylvania or at the national level, whether it's states beside us that we're building and garnering and working and building those partnerships with. Because again, we're not necessarily competing with them as we see but it's something that there as as mentioned earlier there are strength in our numbers not just locally here in Pennsylvania but strength in our organizational numbers and to succeed those relationships have to be built we all might offer specific items and we don't venture out of them but when we when we connect with other things, what does that do is build our foundation stronger. And I think it's important for us to continue to, you know, adapt in those because all of these organizations, including ourselves, have seen the struggles and are still working through, you know, the effects of two years of a global pandemic, whether it's financially or whether it's things that just have not happened that have been placed on the back burner. So it's important for us to, you know, look at those relationships, but more importantly is to look at the aspect of that we are supporting music education as a whole. Um, in that, you know, and this is not to sound negative by any means, but uh, we have membership who often is, you know, 
really only participating at the festival level, you know, and if we break that down, we're looking at, you know, four to five content areas with grade levels of grades 10 through 12 and some others trickling down, you know, we, we may be missing part of our membership, you know, two thirds at the elementary, the pre-K level to the middle school and the junior high level, but also we're missing those students too. And I think it's, it's important for us to expand upon opportunities. We've started it and I think it's important for us to grow on them with the Crescendo Conference, with the innovation stage that's happening at the conference this year. Those are important aspects and they can be bigger. And not that you know they're in the initial planning stages, but those are great foundations in which we can fully support everybody that matches our mission statement in supporting music education for all Pennsylvanians, students, educators, and our organization as well. Well, uh, Brett, thank you so much for taking some time to chat and lay out uh, all of these ideas because there's a lot in there. There's a lot to unpack. So uh, thank you so much for taking the time to chat today. I appreciate the opportunity to do so. And like you said, it is a lot. And, you know, if there's anything I can reach out to anybody who has questions, I'd be more than happy to do that as well. Again, what we talk and what we learn from each other only makes us stronger. So, Mark, thanks for the time. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Thanks for taking the time to thanks. talk to us. We're here now with Jason LaRue to uh, talk about uh, why he wants to be uh, president-elect of PMEA. Jason, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Mark. It's great to see you again. Yeah, great to see you as well. So uh, let's start with, uh, can you give us your quick bio? Well, sure. Um, I consider myself a PMEA lifer. I grew up in South Central Pennsylvania, was the product of some excellent PMEA music teachers. Uh, I went through the PMEA festival system uh, for both band and chorus, and it really helped motivate me to pursue uh, the career in music that I chose. Uh, I moved on to Westchester University for my bachelor's and my master's degree, uh, where, again, I got to work with some excellent out, uh, teachers that were uh, very involved with PMEA. Um, got my first job in Annapolis, Maryland, where I taught middle school choir and uh, some elementary general music, a little bit of guitar. Uh, but I had the opportunity not far into that to come back into Pennsylvania and uh, as a long-term substitute where I taught a uh, middle and high school band and some general music. And um, after that, I ended up here at Parkland High School in Allentown um, with an initial band of approximately 70 students, which we've built to over 200 members now. Uh, along the way, I've taught some music theory. I still teach piano classes. Um, uh, about midway through my career here, I became a member of our uh, District 10 Executive Committee, thanks to uh, Claire Neiman, who was the choir director here and my mentor. Um, he was our uh, secretary treasurer and he got me involved as our uh, county representative. Um, and I've been on the executive committee ever since. Um, I began hosting festivals. In 2017, I was elected District 10 president and now I'm serving as uh, the immediate past president, uh, our District 10 representative to the Student Performance Events Council. And um, I was honored to be asked to uh, serve on the PMEA Strategic Planning Committee. Uh, we have a very musical family. My wife, Christine, is an accomplished elementary music teacher, uh, also here in the Parkland Sc School District. Uh, She's also a pianist and a vocalist, and she's an excellent sounding board for everything elementary and piano and vocal and, and uh, uh, in her area of expertise. Now, we have two daughters who uh, are adults now, but they were PMEA band, chorus, and orchestra festival students themselves. Um, and now they're both young professionals in music. Um, and I credit PMEA with inspiring them to, uh, to pursue music as their careers. So, and I continue to make music here in the uh, Allentown area, uh, playing in uh, our local community bands and in our own church. Okay, uh, so what interests you in taking on the role as PMEA president? Well, PMEA has been such a positive influence in my life, as well as many of my students, including my own children. Uh, I want to see that influence continue and flourish. Uh, more than, now than ever, our students need strong music programs and excellent music teachers 
as we pull out of the pandemic. And I think we need uh, to continue with strong leadership as we've had in the past and currently have uh, to make this happen. One of the things I enjoy most about being a music teacher and a PMEA member is getting to go out and meet and work with other music teachers in other school districts. Uh, whether it be going to festivals, professional development, uh, board and committee meetings even. I, I like working with our teachers. I think they are excellent people uh, that do a great job. Uh, during my tenure as District 10 president, I was able to do that on the state level. And I, again, I met so many great people across the state and I hope I get to continue to work with them through this position. So how does a PMEA best serve music educators and music students post pandemic? Well, I think first of all, we need to get our music programs up and running again. And we've, we've already started getting our festivals going. They're not quite back to their normal look, but it's a great start. And as we come out of the pandemic, I'm sure we will uh, begin that return to normal. Uh, this is a huge motivator for many of our students and uh, they, they deserve to have that opportunity for our, for our better musicians. Um, but I think we also have to provide performance opportunities beyond these festivals for ensembles that are, uh, that are coming back out of the pandemic, uh, including small ensembles and chamber groups. A lot of us had to, to retool our programs to do that kind of thing. And it's been wonderful. We've, we've discovered our chamber groups and now it's time for us to, to find a place for them to, to perform. And not necessarily at, um, again, our PMEA festivals, but um, at adjudications. And, you know, I think we're gonna have to be creative as far as outreach and getting those groups out and, and having some um, uh, some opportunities to, uh, to perform. Um, and I also think that we're gonna need to uh, provide support for the teachers in our schools where the programs were really decimated and have to be uh, rebuilt. Uh, there, there are a lot of teachers that feel beaten down at this point and we need to get them excited to teach again. And that's one of the things I've experienced coming back is um, the days are long, but I really feel good about what we're doing. And when I'm standing in front of the, the, the group, be it um, my band or my piano class, and I think to myself, it's like, yeah, I really enjoy doing this and I'm glad we're back doing it again. And, uh, and I hope for that for, for everybody who's, uh, um, who's out there teaching. So the other thing too is, uh, I think we've learned a lot through the pandemic and there are things that we can take forward. Uh, as I mentioned, the small ensembles are one of them. Uh, I believe we got a lot better at the use of technology. Um, I, probably a lot of us are, are tired of being on Zoom, but it is a useful tool. Uh, one of the things that we did last year is we were able to set up master classes with uh, Mike Levine from the Dallas Brass and uh, some of the music that we were playing that, uh, that came from the Dallas Brass. And Mike was happy to, to do master classes with us uh, from his place in Minneapolis. That's something that uh, I don't think we were doing as much of before the pandemic and, and now we do. And that's something great that we can carry forward. Um, and the other thing are things like these podcasts uh, have been wonderful. Uh, and I think that really uh, helps uh, spread the word about PMEA and just exactly what we're doing. So um, what are your goals then for PMEA and how do you think you could accomplish them um, if you are elected? Well, first of all, I'd like to maintain many of our traditions. Um, we are one of the strongest MEAs in the, in the country for a reason. We've been doing a lot of things right for a long time. Um, we have a rich history and I don't want to abandon that. But at the same time, we do need to adapt to current times. Uh, we need to be willing to reflect today's culture and have offerings for all of our members and their students. Our state has a lot of different looks. We have urban areas, we have suburban areas, and we have very rural areas. Uh, that requires a lot of flexibility 
for, um, uh, for our organization. And um, I know the desire is there to do that. And we have to keep working to, to reach out to all of our teachers across the state and make sure that we can involve as many of them in, as possible. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to, to do is to de develop more performance and learning opportunities for these schools and uh, for their teachers. Um, I think a way to do that is to look at what other state MEAs are doing across the country and learn from them and uh, adopt what may work well for us. Um, not everything's gonna work for us, but we can get some really excellent ideas from seeing what else is going on across the country. As president, I hope to be able to connect with others outside of Pennsylvania and bring those best practices back here. Um, I also believe we need to uh, work to advance music in our schools at all level and not just be seen as an organization for the high schools um, and make all of our teachers feel like they belong to our organization, including the middle school and the elementary teachers. Um, to have outreach to all of our teachers and to work to uh, reach those who may not currently be active members. Um, to work to connect with the elementary and middle school teachers and develop partnerships for um, uh, offerings, not just at the state conference, but year round with other organizations like the American Orph Asso Association and the uh, Organization for Kodai and Fireband and World Music Drumming, all excellent organizations which many of our teachers are involved with independently, but why not uh, collaborate with these groups and bring them under the tent together with us and offer uh, professional development and uh, uh, opportunities for all of our students. Um, I'd like to work closely with our collegiate programs, uh, developing our next generation of music teachers. They're going to have a lot of challenges ahead of them. And uh, those of us with the experience can, can help lead them in that direction. Um, and educate our up and coming school administrators as to what a solid music program looks like in our school. Um, I believe that in some of our schools at least, um, that the programs have been watered down over time. And we need to maintain a certain standard of excellence, uh, not only for our performing ensembles, but for all of our children. And we need to let our school administrators know, this is what we need to be doing and teaching in schools. And this is an important part of our students' education. And then finally, I think it's important to connect with um, community bands, community choirs and orchestras so that our students have a place to perform after they've been in our high school and college programs. Music doesn't just end for them once they've gone through college. Uh, these are the people that will be decision makers as administrators and school board members uh, and will determine the future of music education. And they will appreciate um, their music experience, especially if they get that chance to continue to be lifelong performers and consumers of music. So I think that's a very important part of what we need to do is make those connections with our community groups and adult performers. Okay, well, Jason, uh, thank you for taking a few minutes to talk to us. It's my pleasure. Our thanks to both candidates for joining and chatting with us today. Uh, we hope that that helps you as you make a decision uh, to vote in this year's PMEA election. Uh, it is very important that you vote and have a voice in your association. A uh, reminder that those uh, elections are open now, not only for the uh, position of president-elect, but also for the various content areas. Thanks for joining us on this special edition of PMEA's Take Note podcast presented by the Slippery Rock University Music Department. We'll see you next time.